OB Toppin on the eight and a half points. Are we taking the under? Are we taking the over? Let's talk about it. But first, as always, I will recap last night's picks. Went pretty well here. You could see the triple stack on the Dallas Mavericks did hit. Luka Doncic cleared that 18 and a half rebounds assist. And then Tim Hardaway and Derek Lively did clear their points and three points made props. Honestly, we got kind of lucky on this. It was not looking good until the fourth quarter where they all hit together. But that's another triple stack. So it's like the third or fourth video in a row that the triple stacks have been hitting, whether they're all green or all red. And of course, tonight I'm going to have another triple stack for you guys. Other than that, the Arizona stack that I was going for here. So Arizona both on the over hitter strikeouts with Ashcraft, who was the pitcher they were up against to go over his pitcher strikeouts didn't end up hitting Guriel got struck out twice I believe but it was not in the first two innings so nothing too impressive there then the other slip Donovan Mitchell ended up DNPing and again this stack didn't hit Spencer did not end up getting his fourth strikeout and but either way Brent Rooker did hit his hits runs RBI so we'll get onto the board and tonight I actually have four slips I'm gonna have a six man and three four mans for you guys and I will be showing you the best way to use this Caitlin Clark over half a point prop as well as be building a full WNBA slip for the start of WNBA might as well go with a full four man and I will be posting WNBA throughout the whole season so don't don't think after nbm done i will definitely be posting all summer so make sure you're sub for that one last thing before we get into the picks i did say i was running a giveaway on last night's video so i'm going to be picking two winners right now the first winner is going to be you right here tmv his favorite pick was donovan mitchell under on pra well he didn't play so it doesn't really matter you are the first giveaway winner and the second winner is going to be right here Derek Lee. again another donovan mitchell heat one you want the second part of the giveaway so just comment on today's video and i'm gonna hook you guys up with the free vip let's get into the picks right away now and let's start in the nba i'm gonna be going with five nba picks here and a demon prop it's gonna pay 38x it's going to be a beautiful slip and we're gonna start it off with ob toppin everyone is on his over eight and a half you can see 55.7k people are on this over eight and a half because he has cleared in the past four to five he has been putting in decent minutes and he has been doing very well now is it eight and a half a good prop to actually go over and i think it is i will be going with the over tonight if you go over on bet 365 and we can check other sports books but just to show you simply he does have juice towards the over at eight and a half and i did see on sleeper he is set on nine and a half some other spots he is set on nine and a half so eight and a half is definitely a great spot and you want to be on the over if you're already on the over then you have a good pick but one thing to consider is if you're grabbing obi toppin as you guys know i'm always thinking who could i pair obi toppin up with in this slip that makes sense that kind of have a correlation effect and you could be thinking taking of tyrese halliburton on his over assist for example because if you know obi toppin's getting points it's likely that the main assister is assisting obi toppin especially if he's a heavily assisted player but what i like better when i'm taking obi toppin is actually to grab an under on someone like pascal siakam or you could even go with an under on miles turner and you could see this relationship very easily in this past five graphs. The only time Obi Toppin did not clear his point sign was in this fourth game out of the last five. You could see his red here. Everything else was heavily green. Now, if you go and check Pascal Siakam, it's the complete opposite graph. The only time he went over was in this fourth game. So every time that Obi Toppin went over, Pascal Siakam went under. So that's the kind of relationships I'm looking for all the time. And it's kind of similar with Miles Turner too. They went the opposite direction in every game except this one right here on game two where they both went over. So what do you do with that information? You could... So what do you do with that information? You do something like this. Miles Turner under 16.5 points and Obi Toppin over 8.5 points within the same slip. Why? Because if Obi Toppin goes over, it's likely that Miles Turner is going under. So you're hitting two props for the price of one. Now, I'm not going Miles Turner in this case. I'm actually going with Pascal. I think this is probably the best pick you go with, but I'm not going with his points. I don't like it at 20 and I don't like push lines. Another play that I think is way better is his under 3.5 points plus assists. And of course, his points and his points plus assists are going to be very correlated. But the reason I'm not liking his points plus assist prop compared to his points, because if we go over to Bet365 and check Pascal Siakam on the points plus assist prop, you're going to see his 23 and a half actually has juice towards the under here at the minus 120. Now for his actual points prop, it is heavily juiced towards the over 19 and a half. Yes, we're getting at 20, but I don't see the point in taking that push line when his under PA is a pretty good prop. And again, we're going for that correlation effect with OB top. Now, the main reason I'm taking Pascal Siakam over Miles Turner is you could actually go and check the on off court stats. If you see Pascal Siakam, he has 1,116 minutes with Obi Toppin off the court. Now remember that number, about 1.1K of his minutes are with Obi Toppin off the court. Now if you go check his total minutes in general, he has about 1.3K minutes. So about 80 to 85% of Pascal Siakam's minutes this season have been with Obi Toppin off the court. So what does that mean? Obi Toppin's minutes are going to be bleeding into Pascal Siakam's minutes. So basically when Obi Toppin's getting more minutes, you're going to expect Pascal Siakam to get less minutes. In these games here versus Milwaukee, you can see Obi Toppin drop 24 minutes and 23 minutes. And these are games where Pascal Siakam was kind of under his averages. He only got 35 minutes and 34 minutes compared to the earlier games in the Milwaukee series where he got 40 minutes and 42. And then you could see Obi Toppin got less minutes in those respective games, 17 minutes and 17 minutes. So the more Obi Toppin plays, the less Pascal Siakam plays. Of course, you can see how that's good for this pairing here. When Obi Toppin is clearing his points, it's likely he's getting more minutes. 
if he's getting more minutes and more points, Pascal Siakam is going to get less minutes and less points. And like I said, if for some reason you're not liking Pascal Siakam, grab Miles Turner on his under 69 points. Miles Turner also has Juice on his under at minus 125. So that's also a good pairing. But I'm not going to take a triple stack here in Indiana. So either choose Pascal or Miles Turner. And moving on to the triple stack, I'm going to be going over to Denver. And if you guys have been watching the videos recently, you probably know I'm going to grab Jokic on his assist. Am I grabbing the under or the over? I will be going with the under tonight because I do see juice on some of these players. That first player is going to be Michael Porter Jr. as I paired him up last time. Then, of course, I'm going to go to KCP. But I'm not going his points again. It's at a push line. I'm not liking that. Go either his points plus rebounds or his points plus assists. The unders are good on both these plays. But I'm going to lean towards the points plus assists as I'll show you in a bit. The first thing I want to show you is how these graphs actually look with Michael Porter Jr. If I go and show you the last five here, he did not clear his points prop in game three and game five of his last five. Now, with Jokic, you could imagine it's going to be pretty similar graph. And in this case, it's actually the exact same graph, kind of similar to what we saw with Pascal Siakam and Obi Toppin. He is red here and red here in game three and five, meaning he went under with MPJ in both those games and was green in all those other games. So in the past five games, these guys have either went over, over or under, under. Tonight, I'm going for the under and I'll show you exactly why. If you go over to Pinnacle and check the juice on these players, first of all, Jokic on the under assist is slightly juiced towards the under. I mean, it's nothing too crazy. Minus 119 compared to minus 111 on the over. If we go over to MPJ though, you're going to see heavy juice towards the under at minus 131. The under 15 and a half points is a way more likely than the over 15 and a half points. And to top it off, if we go over to Pope, despite the fact that he's only hit this once in the past five games, there's also juice on his unders here. So if we look at each of KCP's props, you're going to see the points plus rebounds does have heavy juice towards the under. It's right here at minus 130 at that 10 and a half mark. But I'm liking the points plus assists better because if you go over to PA, you're going to see it's set at nine and a half. We're getting a full PA of value on price picks because it's set at 10 and a half. So this full point discrepancy compared to the sports picks is actually a better play despite the fact that there's more juice on the under 10 and a half on the points rebounds. I can show you why this makes sense because if we go over to the assist prop, we see KCP plus 150 towards the over two and a half assist. But if we go over to his rebounds, we're going to see it's plus 130 towards the over two and a half rebounds. Since his plus line is smaller and closer to zero, it's more likely that he actually goes over two and a half rebounds compared to his over two and a half assists. So obviously the under on the 10 and a half PA is the better play here. And as we already know, this is a beautiful triple stack, mainly because these guys rely heavily on points. Michael Porter Jr. right here, 84.5% of his field goals made are going to be assisted. And then for Pope, similar concept here, 83.7%. Exactly like what happened last game. I mean, Jokic got seven assists, MPJ only four points and KCP three points tonight we're going for that reverse we're going for the all unders so five props right there we have a stack and a triple stack let's finish the slip off by turning it into a 38x slip and how do you do that you go over to nhl and you grab a demon prop i mean it doesn't have to be nhl but nhl does have some very nice demons we're going with elias lindholm here on the over half a point now you're going to see he's only cleared this in the past two to five games guys it's normal he's a demon prop but if you check in this specific series they are in the playoffs versus edmonton he did clear two points in game one cleared two points in game two and honestly vancouver has been doing well holding up their weight they are up in the series versus edmonton who should be winning the cups so they're very hot right now and he has cleared in the series two out of three times let's see if he continues that forward momentum we're going to be grabbing his over half a point of course and if we go over to the sports books and check the juice honestly it's not that crazy he's plus 100 towards the over so about like a 45 ish percent chance that he goes over his half a point and we get that beautiful boost to 38x or a 4x if we get five out of six so we're not going to complain about that. That is going to be the first slip. So first slip's done. Let's get into the second slip. I'm going to have one more after this. I think I said I had four slips of doing the video. I actually have three. So it's WNBA opening day. Let's see what is the best possible slip to make. And I'm going to be eyeing Caitlin Clark right away on her over six and a half assists. Honestly, these last fives don't really matter. Nothing really matters because it was only preseason. But the over six and a half assists prop I'm going with because it's just juiced on these sports books. As we'll see here, Clark assists at the minus 120 towards the over i would never be taking this on its own if i wouldn't be stacking it so we're going over to points and check out the indiana fever and the first player i'm thinking of is nalissa smith she's basically going to be that top scorer other than caitlin clark on the team and if caitlin clark is having a good assisting game you could imagine nalissa smith is more likely to go over points now i can't go and show you how many points from assists smith actually gets because that just doesn't exist for wnba at least not to my knowledge if anyone knows leave a comment below but i will be monitoring the wnba and collecting that on it to see kind of what are the best stacks to be playing and of course i'll be showing you this as the season goes on so caitlin clark in this situation i'm kind of thinking as a Jokic, if he's not getting that 21 and a half point mark or he's not going over his points it's more likely he's having a heavier assisting game and if he is the people around him are going to flourish in this case it would be smith and boston normally i'd say you could go with either of them but in this case boston does have juice towards the under you see under 15 and a half points at minus 125 
Melissa Smith is kind of flat, but again, doesn't really matter because we're going for this correlation effect in the sense that she's going to get a lot of points from Caitlin Clark assist. So it all adds up together to a good play. Now these next two plays just look good because they are too low on price picks. We're going to go with Ezzy on her over 12 and a half points. How do I know this is too low? Well, it's very simple. I go over to a sports book. I type in Ezzy points and you can just see she's set at 13 and a half. Yes, she does have heavy juice towards the under at 13 and a half, but a full point is very crucial, especially when the prop you're taking is kind of a low points prop. So 12 and a half versus 25 and a half points is wildly different every point is going to count especially when your points total is this low you have way more leeway to miss an extra free throw or something like that when you're getting a full point extra so 12 and a half is too low for ezzy and we could even compare this to underdog price picks main competitor here also has her set at 13 and a half and DraftKings also has her set at 13 and a half and this time with no juice towards the under so 12 and a half is definitely a great play for ezzy on the over now similar concept i'm going to go with sykes on the over 15 and a half points if you go and check on DraftKings, they already have her boosted to 16 and a half yes with juice towards the under but we're getting good value there and lastly on underdog she said at 16 again we're getting her at 15 and a half definitely some good value on that that's gonna be a nice four man in the wnb to kick off the season so let's lock this one in and make the last slip that's going to involve caitlin clark's half a point so let's maximize the probability that we could actually get a nice cash with this 0.5 points prop and honestly the best way to do that is just to take your half points prop and you want to put this into a four power technically you could just guarantee profit by taking caitlin clark on her more half a point of course that's a lock then you take any random player you put 12 and a half dollars on a slip on his over you lock that in and then you go and make another slip and you grab his less guaranteeing you a 12 and a half dollar profit because you're putting 25 dollars in and of course one of those slips is going to cash for this 37.5 dollars but that's boring let's go and cash in actual 10x so we're going to take caitlin clark on her over half a point and then we're going to go over to mlb and we're going to make a triple sack so let's go over to oakland and fade them by taking the houston players on their overs so we're going to go to tucker on his over one and a half hits runs rbi and we're also going to take alvarez on his over one and a half hits runs rbis as always if i'm grabbing over hits runs rbis on a one team the other team is not going to be doing well so we're going over to oakland in the mlb live tab and grab his under one and a half pitcher strikeouts for the first two innings now what's good is both these guys will be hitting in the first two innings so you can imagine if they're getting a hits runs rbi within the first two innings then of course sears is not going to hit his pitcher strikeouts prop you can see this does pay the perfect 10x payout so you could go and drop a 25 on this or you could just put like half your unit on 12 and a half and then go and throw caitlin clark in the other slips if you don't like one of the props i went with just take her and put her there or you could do the other trick i just showed you but with half the money and then throw the other half on this slip for example so the reason i'm liking this if we go over to mlb daily lineups you're gonna see kyle tucker is batting fourth or expected to bat fourth and alvarez is expected to bat third these guys are right next to each other in the batting lineup it means it's likely that kyle tucker maybe runs alvarez in or they both get on base and penna runs them in there's so many possibilities for these guys to hit hits runs rbis to Together within the same inning and again both of them will be batting within the first two innings because they are batting third and fourth so that is going to be exactly correlated with jp sears if he goes under his pitcher strikeouts you could imagine that maybe these guys had a good first inning but as always you can't neglect the juice i'm here over on DraftKings. and if we go and check kyle tucker he has a very nice juice towards that over at minus 130 as you can see kyle tucker over one and a half hits runs rbis and then alvarez is right behind him here at minus 125 juice towards the over kyle tucker gets a slightly better play but since these guys are in that batting lineup and very correlated, we're going to hopefully see both these guys cash together and ideally JP Sears cash too. So that is the third slip, everyone. Good luck.